Hello, my gardening friends. Welcome to another video update. I'm actually not in the garden right now. I'm in the woods behind my house. Piper and I are. And this is the area that we go exploring and we recover things and we clean up out here. And uh, this is owned by somebody else. And recently they came by and they did some testing and soil testing. And, um, and then we had to uh, get approvals they were, they're seeking approvals to do some construction on the land here and turn all of this. They are seeking approval to turn this area right here that I'm looking at into a residential community of 39 homes with uh, street access on the other side. So the back of my property is there and I'll have a neighbor behind me if they get approved now they did get approved at the town level even though there was a lot of us that went to the township and said no we don't want this for a whole lot of reasons um but the town still said yes but they still have to get wetlands approval out here but i wanted to come here because i put this prayer feather here when we first moved in um five years ago to protect this space as a prayer to um, like the natives did um, in their time they would hang feathers and say prayers and it was their belief that um, the Creator would take the prayers up to heaven or the Holy Spirit would take the prayers to the Creator through the feather and the wind and hopefully I got that story right and I didn't butcher it. And if anybody knows a better version of that, but the reason why I hung the feather here was as a symbol of just a prayer of protection to protect this land for my son and I, and for all the creatures that are back here. And there are a lot, there are a lot of animals that make a home back here. And it is my prayer to do what I can to try to protect that space. So we're walking from there to the backyard to get an update because today is January 26th. It's Thursday and my husband is off from work. So that means I get a day to play because he's in charge of homeschool today. And I love these days because that means I can come out into the garden and do what I need to do. Now, we just had a couple of days of a lot of rain, a lot of rain, too much rain. And today um, it's cleared up. So I came out to see how everything did in the rain. And then plus we had a lot of wind and it made a mess right there. But in the greenhouse, everything still looks good. And uh, these are all the things that were growing around in the yard that, um, I salvaged like if it's uh, if it reseeded itself like there is the chamomile that reseeds itself you'll see some more there and then this right here is foxglove so these are gonna be all my plants for the front yard because I have big dreams for the front yard but I did have to take a break from my extreme gardening that I was doing because I was enrolled in a whole bunch of classes and I was finishing them up. So I don't have as many things planted. I don't have as many things done as I did last year. So I just wanted to take a video just to show the progress because I was out here working and I realized this is so much work, so very much work. And just when I think I get it cleaned up, I see another mess, but I'm still working in that back corner over there trying to clean it up. But in, if you follow me along in the last video, the last time I created a video, this was all very beautiful and lush and elevated and green and you could see nature everywhere. So now this is the time of year when I get sad, boo hoo. And uh, I do what I can to maintain a, you know, positive, happy, cheery mood, even though I don't have all my beautiful flowers to look at. Um, but I do have a lot of clean out to do so that those flowers can come through in the spring. So you can see here all the beds, if you looked at the previous video, you see these beds were very overgrown with flowers and everything else. 
Um, but I wanted to point out some things that do last through the winter and we've had, we've had a crazy winter with really severe weather, very severe cold weather. So you can see here, this is Dianthus and that tolerates cold weather in zone 7A very well. And it's a beautiful flower that grows in the spring in all different colors. I just absolutely love them. So you'll see, I have another one over here, nice and big and green and like I said, we're in zone 7A, and this is the end of January, and I still have lush green plants growing, and that is the dianthus. So in the spring, I'll do another update on that and show you what it looks like. There's another one over here. And then the thyme also keeps its leaves for the most part throughout the winter. Uh, sometimes it'll drop them, and then in the spring, they'll just all grow back in, but you can see here. There's some more thyme. And then we have lemon balm. That is an incredible medicine that you can see there. It's just starting to poke through and green. Uh, we have also all the mint that I keep contained in the containers. Um, and that's growing back. This is hyssop. And that's already greening in. We got some sorrel over there. And then over here in my pots, now wait, first I'll show you this because you'll notice in the last video I had a beautiful green uh, like thing I made, but I had to take it down because it was done. It was um, the passion fruit and it only lasts one season and I'll show it to you because that's another one that you cut all the way down to the ground and then it re-emerges the next year the same big beautiful plant so you take it all the way down to the stem or not a stem whatever that is down to that and then you'll see that start to poke through in the spring and there's my irises and they have really grown in size i'm gonna start splitting them up and putting them all over the yard since they're multiplying and going all over the place so what else do we have will take you around so it's definitely a different site from the last video I'll show you how the greenhouse is doing um, now since I pared down because I was taking classes and still working on my wellness journey this is pretty much the only lettuce that we have growing and it's in this this greenhouse here so we have mustard red mustard and some kale. I believe that's scarlet kale. That's Mizuna mustard. And that is collard greens. And I have this area right here. I'm getting ready to put some more kale in there that I'm growing in the house. And we've got the sage here that um, it drops its own leaves. Now I did make a mistake and I cut one of the sages back and I think I killed it. You're not supposed to cut sage back, I don't believe. It takes care of itself with uh, dropping its leaves and then it'll re-green in in the spring. And then you can see this area it was, um, oh, I almost fell over on my work area. You can see here I'm working on cleaning out the pots. I, I had so many pots and I still have a lot more back there, but I gotta clean all the pots out because I recycle the soil all around and remake the pots. So I just made all these pots up of some, uh, what are these? These are trees that I'm growing. And I think they're maple trees and um, they're from the helicopters that fall. And when I find them in the garden and if they look big and strong, I'll put them in a pot and then I'll just transplant them from year to year. And these are my first two that I did right here. And then the next year I did those three and I had them in smaller pots and then eventually I put them in this bigger pot here. Um, they sell those at Sam's Club for very cheap, by the way, if anybody is near a Sam's Club. They're just plastic, but they hold a lot. And um, it's allowing these trees to grow. And then these, I'll either give them away or plant them somewhere. Um, I feel like it's just my way of um, being responsible with the trees to, you know, support the growth of some trees at least the best that I can so 
We have all this ready for the spring. I didn't get to put the garlic in in the fall. So I'm gonna to try to do that in the spring to see if that gives it enough time still to grow. And it should. It'll be an experiment this year. Uh, we'll, we'll just see how that goes. But there's the trellis now. I still have to clean that off. That was the beautiful cardinal flower. And now there's all seed up there. So the birds are enjoying the seed. So it still has use for it in nature. So I've been leaving it up there. But this is what I've been working on over here. And um, now normally this would all be cleaned out and I would have a lot of things growing in here even over the winter. But like I said, I had to put this on hold. So this was actually all I got done. Uh, we have some collard greens in here. So. fine. All right, I'm just going to keep going. Um, but I don't think there's too much more I wanted to show you. I just wanted to do a little update of the things that grow in this zone in the winter. Um, you can see the strawberries there. Hopefully that rhubarb that I put there will come back as supposed to. So we'll find out. We do have fennel that's coming back. See, now this you cut down like that and then you see the new growth there. And, uh, we got some blueberries and we got the roses. So here's the look from the winter. It's still inspiring, even though it's not as beautiful and colorful. And I'm hopeful that in the spring, it'll all, whoa, my hot tub keeps falling apart. I gotta fix that. But anyway, I'm hoping in the spring, I'll be able to report back some color in the next video. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.